Hello and welcome to the Stardoc Academy training on data quality. I'm Jaroslav Pullman. To let you know a bit more about me, I'm a solutions architect at Stardoc and passionate about solving problems with customers. In the past 20 years, I've engineered solutions for various domains, spanning from interactive speech applications, text processing, IoT systems, and a plethora of semantic web services. Today, I'm going to walk you through the data quality training. In this training session, you will learn to understand the concept of data quality and why it matters, assess quality requirements for various kinds of data, apply appropriate means to assess quality of data, evaluate, communicate, and act upon data quality reports, and how to operate Stardoc to ensure quality of integrated data. So let's get started. This section provides an overview of the data quality concept. Let's start with an essential statement, something like data quality does not exist on its own. It's always relative in nature, depending on criteria and evaluation approach. The classical definition of quality as fitness for use by the quality evangelist Joseph Moses Juran underlines the contextual nature of data quality. Likewise, the criticality of data quality may substantially differ with regard to function and impact. So, the decision about the level of acceptable quality is a trade-off between the costs of maintaining a particular quality level versus dealing with the consequences of failure. Generally, we recommend a continuous quality assessment be an integral part of your data pipeline that will test and intervene early, close to respective data source, to prevent errors from propagating. The resources targeted by the validation must be identified clearly along with the options to express quality constraints in a formal, machine-processable manner. This is imperative for a reproducible and automated validation process. Data quality is not only contextual, but multifaceted in nature. Your validation process should consider the intrinsic dimensions related to data itself, as well as the extrinsic parameters related to the provisioning infrastructure. Within the boundaries of inherent on the one side, and extrinsic system-dependent quality categories on the other side, the related standard ISO 25012 specifies a range of quality dimensions such as accuracy, that addresses the question whether the data is correct, it is formally and conceptually aligned with what is considered valid in a particular domain. Credibility could we rely on the information or are there possibly contradicting versions? Completeness is the information missing for a particular use case? Relevance will the data help answering our questions? Timeliness. Is the information still up to date? Or validity? Does the data comply with standards or definitions to be processed reliably? The Data Quality Vocabulary DQV is a model proposed by the W3C Working Group Data on the Web Best Practices to encode quality information of datasets in a structured and actionable manner. DQV quality dimensions address user-oriented qualitative characteristics of a dataset, for example, whether it's complete, valid, accurate, or technically available. Related dimensions are grouped to higher-level categories. A dimension is expressed via one or more measurable metrics. Metric encodes the strategy used to assess a dimension, such as accuracy, by means of an observable indicator, for example, special resolution. The value range of metrics is often numeric, percentage, or Boolean. A quality measurement represents a result of evaluating given data set against a specific quality metric. It is an observation indicating the measured value along with the unit. Quality annotations comprise further potentially informal quality statements such as ratings, certificates, or user feedback. Metadata annotations may group quality statements providing context on the evaluation process, agent or service performing the evaluation, evaluation time, etc. 
This outline relates the classes of the data quality vocabulary to other important standards for data annotation, such as the data catalog vocabulary DCAT, the provenance ontology PROO, or the doubling core terms vocabulary. A quality assurance cycle covers a broad spectrum of concerns. These conveniently map to tasks outlined in the diagram. The analyzed task identifies important data sets as a target for validation, along with quality constraints to impose. The validate task turns the business constraints into executable tests, validates the data, and generates reports. The evaluate task aggregates and analyzes the reports over time, identifies recurrent issues, and initiates their handling. The fix task addresses the identified issues by implementing fixes to data and infrastructure. And finally, the cross-cutting control task drives the feedback cycle in order to proactively detect and prevent quality issues. The reminder of this training will focus on the analyze, validate and evaluate tasks. It introduces the concept of validation targets along with informal constraint examples. We will learn how to implement constraints on graph data using the Shackle standard and finally how to interpret Shackle validation reports. This concludes the section introducing the data quality concept. This section is about the analyze task. Any kind of data integrated via Stardox Enterprise Knowledge Graph may become a validation target. Different constraints apply depending on its technology, purpose or level of abstraction. In the following, I'll present four kinds of prominent targets for validation to inspire your critical review. The source data comprises any non-graph data accessed via Stardox Virtualization Layer. Bulk of the graph data are descriptions of individual resources, the instances of a schema. The schema defines the resource types along with applicable attributes and relationships. Concepts are singleton resources often organized in a hierarchical structure and therefore share characteristics of instance data and schemas. Relational data is the predominant source access via the virtualization layer. It's highly structured across tables that usually represent an entity type. Each table row stores data for a particular instance split up into attribute columns. The schema is mandatory and defined upfront via statements of the data definition language in SQL, such as create table. The database management system enforces the constraints imposed by the schema. It, for example, ensures that key values are present and unique, references via primary and foreign keys are preserved, and attribute values comply with their data type or value range. The table album on the left has been created by the SQL command on the right. The schema defines the data structure along with the inherent constraints. Virtualized sources of semi-structured data, such as NoSQL document databases, are yet another potential target for validation. This kind of data is organized in hierarchies of non-overlapping blocks, it is trees of nested XML elements or JSON objects. The extensible markup language XML and JavaScript object notation JSON are the main syntaxes for semi-structured data. An XML or JSON document is said to be well-formed if it complies with the standard syntax rules and could at least be read. Additionally, a document is valid if its content complies with the structure rules of an associated schema so it could reliably process by a schema-aware application. Though optional, a schema is sufficient to express complex validation constraints on documents. The XML document on the left encodes album data as a tree of elements and attributes. The XML schema on the right defines the valid document structure, such as the sequence and cardinality of elements or data types of attributes. The bulk of graph data are statements on instances of a schema. Compared to XML and JSON languages, many alternative syntaxes exist for RDF. Constraints on graph data in general 
would operate on the abstract RDF triple model. Constraints on the instance data in particular will most likely reflect domain-specific assumptions about what is a valid resource. So in the music database domain, one may require an album to contain at least one track, the release date of an album be of type XSD date, or a track to have a non-zero length. The snippet of RDF instance data on the left leverages the model defined by the RDF schema on the right. Unlike the SQL data definition language or the presented document schema languages, the schemas and ontologies in RDF do not define constraints, but inference rules. They specified what new facts called inferences could be derived out of the already known facts. For example, the property track is, according to the schema, assigned to instances of the class album, so let it be will be classified as an album. The property values are known to be of type song, so across the universe and other resources linked by the property track are classified as a song. Concept schemes and taxonomies serve a semi-formal representation of knowledge and reside somewhere between instance data and models. The widely used simple knowledge organization systems course, for example, supports the definition of hierarchical and associative networks of concepts where predicates SCOS broader and SCOS related respectively. Linguistic annotation of concepts is crucial since it conveys the meaning of a concept, so there are dedicated properties to specify the unique concept name via SCOS pref label or common alternatives via SCOS alt label. Example constraints on taxonomy concepts may require each concept to reference the defining scheme, each concept to have a main title in English and to only have exactly one main title per language tag, or to prevent cycles in concept hierarchies. In the instance data on the left, the concept genre rock music was used as the value of the genre property. The SCOS scheme on the right defines a hierarchical vocabulary of music genres with rock music being a sub-concept of the broader popular music concept. Let's consider the final validation target. Graph models define the terminology of classes and properties for instantiation in RDF graphs. They range from simple hierarchies such as supported by RDF schema to complex class expressions in a web ontology language O. Example constraints targeting models may check for common mistakes and enforce at most one RDFS range to be specified by property, ensure compliance with a naming convention requiring property names to start with the verbs has or is, or proof blank notes in the instance data specify a type. Additionally, we may want to implement constraints expressed by the model itself and ensure, for example, that at most one single value is defined for the functional property ID. This concludes the section Analyzing Validation Targets. This section is on the Validate task. Let's look at some means to implement data quality tests. Following the unit testing paradigm in software development, we suggest to treat data as code and to set up its automated testing as part of a continuous development process. For this end, Stardoc supports the options of checking the database for consistency and the constraint validation via the Shackle standard. The former tests whether a database is consistent with regards to inferences entailed by a schema. As mentioned earlier, RDF schema languages are not sufficient for constraint validation since they are descriptive, not prescriptive in nature. They do not defy constraints but inference rules to derive new facts out of the known. But inferences may contradict the stated facts and disclose inconsistencies. This is a consistency test based on RDF schema inference. Objects of the property date are inferred to be of the data type XSD date. Invalid values will make the database inconsistent. The date specified by the example statement is of type string and will conflict with the inferred data type date. The call to Stardock CLI command Stardock reasoning explain minus i 
reveals the inconsistency. The string property value is incompatible with and violates the modeled property range. The next example averages inference rules of the web ontology language O. Values of the property producer are inferred to be of type producer. For sake of this example, let's define an artificial rule that prohibits a producer to be an artist at the same time. This means the classes producer and artist are disjoint, as stated by the old disjoint with predicate. The example statement asserts the same resource be the artist and producer of my album and is obviously not consistent with the model. The CLI command start or reason explain reports a violation of the disjointness axiom. The recommended way of implementing quality assurance in Stardog is its Integrity Constraint Validation feature, ICV. It ensures the database is valid according to a rule set. Depending on the mode, ICV may test the database on demand, for example performing an extensive background check on regular schedule, or alternatively, to apply constraint validation as part of update transactions with the guard mode enabled. The transaction will fail upon validation error and prevent invalid data to enter the database. Please activate the configuration property ICV enabled to enable the guard mode. ICV supports various technologies of which Shackle is the standard and recommended means for expressing constraints. Shackle is the acronym for Shapes Constraint Language, a fairly recent Java3C specification of an RDF vocabulary to describe and validate RDF data. In this training, we will cover the main Shackle core and Shackle Sparkle extension parts of the standard. As said, Shackle definitions are themselves RDF, so-called Shapes Graph, defines constraint on the data graph. The Shapes Graph consists of shapes, which express constraints applied to targets in the data graph. The data graph in Stardock comprises the default graph and all name graphs. In other words, any local graph of the database is validated. The results of a Shackle validation is a validation report. The data graph is valid if all targets confirm to related shapes. As the shapes graph and the validation report are RDF, they are easy to query and manipulate. Shackle files have the common RDF file extensions. The commonly used namespace prefix for Shackle is SH. This diagram summarizes the main concepts introduced in a previous slide. The data graph is validated against the shapes graph that contains a number of shapes. Each shape targets an arbitrary number of RDF nodes and applies constraints on them. Shackle constraints are internally represented by constraint components. Within a shape, constraints manifest as RDF properties parametrizing the test. Shapes are the backbone of Shackle validation. They define a set of constraints a validation target must satisfy. There are two types of shapes, node and property shapes. The node shapes operate on target nodes, which is a set of nodes referred to by a target expression. The property shapes operate on values of target's predicate specified by the path property. In general, Shackle shapes either specify the constraints inline or delegate the constraint specification to an another shape. Shapes might link to other shapes and compose logical expressions. They optionally specify a custom validation message and severity. The predefined severity levels range from informative to critical violation level. This UML diagram outlines the structure and associations of Shackle shapes. Please note how the subclasses node shape and property shape refer to each other by the property and node predicates. The node shapes address the validation targets, while the property shapes apply constraints on values of targets properties. The example node shape album track shape ensures that each album contains at least one track. For this purpose, it selects instances of the class album as target nodes and delegates their test to the anonymous property shape link via the predicate property. The property shape applies the constraint min count on values of the property track as selected by the predicate path. 
Let's have a closer look at the node shapes. Node shapes operate upon RDF terms. It is IRIs, literals and blank nodes that appear as subjects or objects of the data graph triples. Typically, node shapes specify the target for validation. These are either individually enumerated resources by the predicate target node or instances of the target class along with its subclasses. Please note, the class hierarchy in the data graph is traversed by default without the need for reasoning. Further, node shapes may target subjects or objects of triples with a specified property as predicate. An arbitrary RDFS class may become an implicit class target by adding the type node shape to it. The individual nodes targeted by any of the above expressions become so-called focus nodes during the validation. Next to specifying a target, node shapes may optionally define constraints on a focus node, for example to test the kind of the RDF term. The album class in an upper example implicitly defines a node shape on its instances. The node shape below demonstrates a constraint applied on the target node itself. No property shape is involved. Property shapes constrain values of a path on the focus node specified by the predicate path. This may refer to a single predicate such as track or a sparkle property path, for example a sequence, alternative or inverse path. The anonymous property shapes in this example contrast the validation of a simple predicate path length above and a sequence path below. The various types of nodes mentioned in the shackle specification may lead to confusion and are worth summarizing. A target node is any node that satisfies the target condition of a shape. During the validation process, the target node turns into a focus node. A focus node is any node that is being validated against a shape. And finally, a value node is a node used for validation by a constraint. For node shapes, the value node is the same as the focus node. For property shapes, it is any node reachable from the focus node by the expression defined by the path predicate. Target nodes comprise the initial set of nodes that is specified for validation. This may differ from the set of focus nodes that actually is validated. For example, some of the nodes enumerated by the target node predicate may be missing in the data graph. Focus and value nodes refer to the nodes that are effectively involved in a validation process. In the example below, the album Abbey Road becomes the focus node of a property shape that checks the cardinality of the track value node. Shackle constraints express general purpose tests applied on value nodes such as the data type, node kind or cardinality check seen before. Shackle constraints are internally represented by instances of the class constraint component. Components define at least one mandatory and arbitrary number of optional parameters. Constraint parameters are specified as RDF properties of the shackle shape. The pattern constraint component, for example, matches a value node to the regular expression supplied by the mandatory parameter pattern. Shape-based constraints specify complex conditions by combining node and property shapes. In a given example, the anonymous property shape in the album track shape delegates testing of value nodes retrieved from property track to the node shape track album shape. All of the value nodes must comply with the shape linked via node or property predicates. In contrast, with the qualified shape constraints, only a subset of value nodes is required to comply with shape linked via the qualified value shape predicate. The properties qualify min count and qualified max count specify the lower and upper boundaries of how many value nodes must comply with the shape. The value node must not confirm to any sibling shape when qualified value shape's disjoint is true. In other words, node sets validated and counted by each qualified shape must be disjoint. Looking at the example, thumbs 
and fingers of a hand are counted on their own. Shackle shapes do not necessarily cover all existing properties of the target node. Setting the parameter closed to true closes the shape. It will report any additional properties of the target node that are not covered by this shape unless listed by the ignored properties predicate. Shackle cardinality constraints control the expected range of property occurrences on a focus node. The lava min count and upper max count boundaries are inclusive. Consider using qualified value shapes when the value of the counted property matters. The value type constraints apply equally to property and node shapes. With property shapes, they restrict the type of value nodes to a particular data type or class. The class constraint matches the given class and transitively any of its superclasses. Multiple class constraints are interpreted as a conjunction expecting the value node to be instance of each class. To test for alternative classes, you would need to construct a logical OR constraint. The value type constraints on node shapes restrict the kind, it is the generic RDF type of value nodes targeted by the node shape. At most, one node kind constraint may be defined per shape. There is a predefined range of values identifying combinations of RDF terms such as IRI, lateral and blank node. The producer node in the code snippet is expected to be an IRI instead of, for example, a string literal. Property peer constraints relate value nodes for given path to values of a sibling property of the same target node. Depending on the constraint, values in both sets are either required to overlap for constraint equals, be different for constraint disjoint, or be less pairwise comparing both sets for the less than constraint. In the example, the start dates are required to precede the end dates of a tour. As outlined in a diagram on the left, the set of value nodes must be identical to the set of object values of predicate specified by the equals constraint. Any missing or redundant values will be reported. On the contrary, the disjoint constraint will report any values both sets have in common, as the sets are expected to differ. The value constraints require a value node to be equal to a given value or included in a value list. Thus, at least one value node should match the has value property. Alternatively, each value node is required to be a member of the reference list supplied by the in property. In the example, a rock album must specify at least the genre rock music. The value range constraints specify the lower and upper bounds of comparable literal values. Supported are, among others, the numeric and date XML schema data types. Failures to compare incompatible data types, such as string versus date, result in a validation error. The example shape requires a track to have a plausible non-zero length. String-based constraints specify various tests on textual value nodes. The pattern constraint requires a regular expression to match, optionally modified by flags. The language-related constraints reflect requirements of concept schemes for a consistent language coverage. The constraint language in requires the language tag of the value node to match the prescribed alpha 2 language codes. When set to the unique lang constraint prohibits multiple literals per focus node and language. In other words, the values of the scores pref label property in the example must have a unique value per language tag. Logical constraints relate other constraints by the logical operators and or not exclusive or depending on the operator, either none, all, at least one, or exactly one of the combined constraints apply. Please note, the not constraint refers to a signal shape it negates, whereas other logical constraints operate on lists of shapes. The example shape states that instances of the class album 
should not at same time be of type song, such expressing disjointness of both classes. This example illustrates the use of the logical constraint X1. It requires a solo artist to either specify a full name or a combination of first name and last name, but not both alternatives at the same time. Shackle features introduced so far are part of the core specification. This provides a high level vocabulary for common validation use cases. The Shackle Sparkle extension provides a mechanism to define custom, more expressive constraints based on Sparkle select queries. The prefix declaration class supports a declaration of namespace prefixes for reuse within the embedded Sparkle queries. Sparkle-based constraints express advanced tests on focus nodes. They are implemented as Sparkle select queries involving, for example, complex graph traverses, filter conditions, or aggregations. The special variable this is pre-bound to the focus node being validated as signaled by the dollar character. Query solutions of the Sparkle query are used to populate the validation results of the report. You may optionally expose the variable path, which is equivalent to the path property of a property shape. When bound, the variable value will map to the objected value in a validation report. The example shape re-implements the cardinality constraint max count to issue a warning about albums with an unusually high number of tracks. Namespace prefixes reference within the Sparkle queries are declared by an instance of the prefix declaration class. This is often attached to an ontology instance where the declare predicate. The Sparkle constraint refers to the same instance where the prefixes predicate. The Sparkle-based constraint detects cycles in concept hierarchies. It is whenever a focus node transitively refers to itself via the SCOS narrower or SCOS broader predicates. To kick off the constraint creation, you may generate an initial version of the shackle shapes from a schema. Shackle shapes are an alternative way of expressing a data model. The CLI command Stardog data model translates between various model manifestations. Selecting OWL as the input and Shackle as the output variant, it will convert, for example, the property domain and range definitions into corresponding Shackle shapes. The command Stardog ICV report will apply a shapes graph on your database and create a Shackle validation report. The shapes graph is either retrieved from a file or resolved within the database. You don't need to persist the shapes graph in the database for an on demand validation. Just apply the most recent version via the studio editor or CLI command argument. This allows for quick testing of changes during the development, versioning of constraints within your source code management system, and to apply the constraints to any, not only the containing database. In order to leverage the guard mode and apply constraints automatically on commit, they must be persisted in the database. Since the shapes graph is RDF, Use the Stardog data add or Stardog data remove commands to manage the constraints within a dedicated name graph of your choice. When not specified else, Stardog will by default locate and apply the constraints maintained in the database. Stardog Studio supports the development and testing of Shackle shapes against the database when Shackle is selected as the editor's content type. The editor window will let you prototype the shapes Hitting the Get Validation Report button, it will display a report of validating the database against shapes supplied in the Editor window or stored in the database when the Editor window is empty. This concludes the section How to Validate Data in Stardog. This section is on the Evaluate task. A Shackle compliant processor will generate a validation report as a result of applying Shackle Shapes graph on a data graph. The report itself is an RDF graph that expresses the overall conformance and optional set of validation results according to the Shackle validation report vocabulary. Validation results indicate, among others, the shape that generated the result and its severity.
the property confirms of a validation report is true if no validation results, regardless of severity, were produced, false otherwise. In a latter case, the report links to instances of the validation result class where the predicate result. Each validation result refers to the immediate source shape that generated the result. This is often a property shape defined as a blank node. For sake of traceability, it's recommended to name shapes by an IRI and prevent the use of blank nodes. The result severity is an instance of the severity class. This is violation by default, but not specified as by the corresponding shape. The predicate source constraint component links to the shackle constraint that was not met when evaluating the focus node. The validation result further indicates the objected value which was retrieved from the result path of the focus node. The focus node, result path and value represent the objected triple in the data graph. You may query the data graph to retrieve additional context on those nodes. The shackle validation reports may be persisted, aggregated and queried as arbitrary RDF data. The command stardoc ICV report will generate a report which is in turn persisted by the stardoc data add command. The command stardoc query execute may apply an analytical query serving an upstream evaluation. The example query retrieves shapes with the most validation results, indicating the prominent kind of issues. This concludes the section on evaluating shackle validation reports. Let's briefly look how to work with shackle constraints in Stardoc. With this music schema loaded into the database, we will generate the initial set of constraints. Looking at the album class three property shapes were generated, they require the value nodes of the property date be of data type date the value nodes of property track be of type song and the value nodes of property artist be of type artist. Let's create a validation report based on the generated constraints. The validation report is apparently very extensive, so let's load it into the database and query for the most common issues. This query indicates the most common kind of issues by ordering shapes by the number of nodes they reported. Both kinds of issues refer to missing or incorrect value types. The second one, value must have type artist, is based on the class constraint of album's artist property. One objected album was ordered by Johnny Cash. Looking at the data, Johnny Cash is asserted as the artist of the Solitary Man album, but he is not known to be an artist. There is no related statement about Johnny Cash in our database. In order to fix the issues, we either have to insert the missing type statements on artists and songwriters into the database, or ask Stardoc to make use of knowledge implied by the schema. The value range of the property artist is the classed artist. So Stardoc may infer that any resource linked by this property is of the type artist. Stardoc will take inferences into account when performing the validation with the flag Reasoning. Apparently, we were able to resolve the issue of incorrect value type by inferring it from the schema. Finally, let's look at the shackle support in Studio. Once we select the content type shackle, Studio will apply the correct syntax highlighting an updater interface. This example shape will warn about albums with more than 25 tracks. We have specified the severity level 
and a clear message with a property shape in order to show up in the validation report. Please note the source shape refers to an anonymous property shape, which is hard to track, and we should give it an IRI. The objected value, it is number of tracks, is optional and missing in a validation result. We may query the data graph with a focus node as the subject and result path as the predicate of a graph pattern that retrieves the value nodes being counted. The objected value, it is number of tracks, is optional and missing in a validation result. We may query the data graph with the focus node as the subject and the result pass as the predicate of a graph pattern that retrieves the value nodes being counted. That concludes the demo for data quality. This is a brief selection of recommended resources. The data quality vocabulary that formalizes the concept of data quality along with references to important standards. The comprehensive presentation on RDF data quality assessment by Dimitris Kontokostas, creator of the RDF unit testing framework. The highly informative book Validating RDF Data and the chapter 5 on Shackle validation in particular. The Shackle specification that will provide you with a number of illustrative examples you may test in an online Shackle playground. And last but not least, please have a look at the introductory resources on constraint validation in Stardog, the webinar Data Validation in Shackle by our CTO, Evren Sirin, on our view of further materials how to improve data quality and code examples in our GitHub repository. That concludes the Stardog Academy training on data quality. We reviewed how to understand the concept of data quality and why it matters, how to assess quality requirements for various kinds of data, how to apply appropriate means to assess quality of data, how to evaluate, communicate and act upon data quality reports, and finally how to operate Stardog to ensure quality of integrated data. Thanks for following along. If you have any questions, please review our Frequently Asked Questions page or head to docs.stardog.com for additional information.